Hi, I am Asuka Gauri and in this video I'll show you how to download CentOS Linux and install it in a VirtualBox virtual machine. Visit my website www.nixeducation.com for more video tutorials and information on my books. The procedure that I am going to demonstrate applies to CentOS Linux version 7.4. However, it is also applicable to previous CentOS versions with minor differences. Once you understand the key settings that the installation process presents or asks you to configure, you won't feel uncomfortable installing any CentOS version. The procedure presented in this video applies to Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Oracle Linux, Scientific Linux, and other Linux distributions that are based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Here are the main topics that I'll be covering. Number one, download CentOS. Number two, prepare a virtual machine for CentOS installation. Number three, a quick look at the settings to be used during installation. Number four, perform CentOS installation. And number five, access CentOS command line from Windows. CentOS is available from its official website www.centos.org. Open up a browser window and type centos.org to go to the website. www.centos org this is the main page the centos project click on get centos now and then click on dvd iso image the latest version is available right here 1708 which means august 2017 click on any of the links from where you want to download the iso image let's click here save file to your desktop it's a large file, 4.6 gigabytes in size. It's going to take a while. The download is complete and the ISO image is stored on my desktop. In one of my other videos titled How to Download and Install Oracle VM VirtualBox, I created a virtual machine that I named CentOS 7.4. I will use that VM to install CentOS in it. Let me bring up the VirtualBox manager. Here it is, CentOS 7.4 is the name of the virtual machine. It's uh, currently powered off. Here's the name of it, operating system, Red Hat 64-bit. CentOS is a clone of Red Hat, one gigabyte of memory, and uh, the boot order for this virtual machine is floppy, optical, and hard disk. I'm gonna take floppy out from here. We don't need it. And then click OK. Display audio, USB, shared folders, and description. I will leave them to their default values. Under the storage tab, there is, um, it shows here eight gigabytes of virtual hard disk. The name of the virtual hard disk is this. Optical drive, currently it is empty, so let's click on it, and then click on choose disk image, and select the ISO image that we downloaded. It's right here, CentOS. 7.4 and click open to attach the ISO image to the virtual machine. So when we start this virtual machine, it will boot off of this ISO image. Under the network tab, we have multiple options for our first adapter. Net not attached means there's, uh, there's no network interface attachment. Net, net network, bridge adapter, internal network, host only adapter, and generic driver. I usually select bridge adapter and this is my Wi-Fi interface that I'm going to select. Click OK. Now our virtual machine is ready for CentOS installation. There are a number of settings that need to be made or adjusted during the installation of CentOS. These settings include the language, the layout of the keyboard, the time zone, and the location. I will use the base installation environment called Server with GUI as a software selection option. This option will install some base networking services along with a desktop for users to interact with the system using a graphical user interface. I will use the default disk partitioning scheme that will slice the disk into three partitions called root, boot, and swap. The installer program will automatically allocate an appropriate amount of disk space to each partition. I will name this Linux system CentOS 7.4 and supply static IP assignments. I will use a class C IP address of 192.168.0.150 with a net mask of 255.255.255.0 and gateway 192.168.0.1.
So we're ready for the installation. Let's select CentOS 7.4 and click on the start button to power up the virtual machine. There are a couple of options here. The first one is install CentOS 7. The second one is test this media and then install CentOS 7. And the third option is for advanced use, which is to troubleshoot an unbootable CentOS Linux system. So we're going to select install CentOS 7 to begin the installation. Start of messages. Let me adjust the console. Okay. And then click on view scale mode so that we can see the entire screen right here. Okay, so English is the default language and we select this language, click continue. Next, it shows the page with installation summary. We have multiple configuration options here, date and time configuration. The default is America's and New York time zone and keyboard is English us language support english us software installation source local media which is the iso image we've already selected software selection we're going to make a choice here installation destination the partitioning scheme for the disk k dump networking and hostname selection and security policies now let's change the date and time the default that is selected automatically is America's New York. Let's change it to America's Toronto. Toronto, which is in the same time zone as New York. And the time is 10, 11, select AM, PM, 10, 11 AM, January 22nd, 2018 and click done after these changes date and time are adjusted keyboard is the default perfect language support installation source is the local media which is the iso image so let's leave it to the default as well under software selection we're going to select server with gui server for operating network infrastructure services with a graphical user interface click done to go back to the installation summary page Next, click on the installation destination. The default, the hard disk that we created with the virtual machine, 8 gigabyte in size. Partitioning is automatically configured partitioning. We're not changing any options here. Click done. Automatic partitioning selected. Network and host name, click on this option. And over here, it shows us this is where we change the host name. So let's select CentOS 7.4 as the host name of the system and maybe .example.com and I'm going to configure a static IP address. Click configure and then click IPv4 settings. Select manual and click add here to add an IP address 192.0. 168.0.150 that was is 255.255.255.0 which is 24 gateway is 192.168.0.1 so this new IP address is added and that's it click save to save the configuration and we need to ensure that the adapter is enabled. So the IP address is shown here 192.168.0.150. Subnet mask is here and the default route is also here. Everything looks perfect. Click done. So networking and hostname are also configured. Kdump is enabled by default. The kernel dump is a kernel crash dumping mechanism which is used in the event of a system crash. 
it captures information from the system when the system is crashed and that information can be used later to determine the cause of the crash so let's leave it to the default value click done security policy we're not going to make any changes there so all configuration looks good let's click on the begin installation button and now as you can see here creating partitions starting package installation process etc etc we need to assign a password to the root user account so let's do that now it's a password it's a weak password so click the done button twice and let's also create a user account here a normal user account called user1 password and click the done button twice to confirm that we can use this weak password now installation is continuing and uh, as you can see here it is going to install 1255 packages it will take a few minutes the installation is almost done it's performing post installation setup tasks all 1255 software packages have been installed the installation is complete and the reboot button over here is now active click reboot and the system is rebooting The new Linux system is booting up. Some initial setup tasks. The first one is license information. I accept the license agreement and the information is here. Click the done button to confirm. We already configured network and host name. Click finish configuration. The desktop is up. Let's log in as user one. The password I entered was user123. I'm logged in as user1. Since this is the first time I'm logged in as this user, it shows the welcome screen. English is selected as the language. Click Next. The default keyboard type is English US. Click Next again and privacy location service let's leave it to the default and connect your online accounts click skip you're ready to go start using centos linux and these are some videos here use windows and workspaces switch tasks respond to messages some basic getting started videos available here we can click any one of them and watch Browse the web, connect to online account, etc., etc. So just close this window. Now we can click the right mouse button and then select open terminal. This is the shell environment, the terminal screen that we can use to execute commands on our Linux system. I'm going to show you now how to access this Linux system from the Windows host. I use a software called Putty. So let's download it. It's a small footprint software and it is available for free on the internet. So Google it, download Putty for Windows. Putty.org is the website. Click here and select. We can simply download the binary file Putty.exe 64 bit. It's downloading. Download is complete. Click on it and click run. And this is the interface for it. The IP address is 192.168.0.150, port is 22, which is the default SSH protocol port. SSH is already selected and let's call it CentOS 74. Click save and then click open to start a session. 
it shows a warning message click yes to continue here is the login screen type the username user1 and password so we're logged on to the new Linux system and now we can execute commands and interact with the operating system and this brings us to the end of this video. I suggest to review chapter 1 from either of my books shown on this slide for a detailed description of the installation process. These books provide 100% coverage of Linux certification exams, RHCSA, RHCE, CompTIA Linux Plus and LPIC 1. Most of the information presented in these books is also applicable to the Linux Foundation certification exams, LFCS and LFCE. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to channel Nix Education for notifications of our new videos, and share this video with your friends and colleagues. Thank you for watching. Bye.